Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here with TRQ. In today's video, we're going to be going over the P0420 and P0430 codes that you might get when you have a check engine light on in your vehicle. And those stand for catalytic converter below threshold efficiency. Now, this vehicle is somewhat unique in that it came in with a dead battery, and that doesn't often hold codes in memory, but this one had one, a permanent code per a P0420. And that leads me in the direction of the catalytic converter of possibly being an issue with this vehicle. But in addition to that, there's a performance problem that I'll share with you now. There's something of a unique situation with this car in that there was no check engine light. To me, those symptoms, lack of power, a lot of noise, and not really moving, that indicates an exhaust restriction. Let's take a closer look at that. I like to do as much of my diagnosis as possible right from the driver's seat. So I'll take the scan tool and I'll look at the live data and I'll pull two things up. I'll pull the upstream O2 sensor and I'll pull the downstream O2 sensor and I'll look at those two readings. On this scan tool, the top one is sensor two, the bottom one is sensor one. What I'm looking for is the upstream sensor should switch back and forth rather rapidly. The downstream sensor should be kind of slow and switch slowly back and forth from rich to lean. If they're both switching at about the same rate, then I can reasonably assume that that catalytic converter is not doing well and not doing its job. But if the front one's switching quickly, back one's switching slowly, then I could say it's probably good. This certainly is interesting because we have a symptom of a clogged or restricted exhaust. We have O2 sensor readings that basically say that the catalytic converter is good. However, there are two catalytic converters on this vehicle and only one is monitored. My preferred tool for checking for an exhaust restriction is a vacuum gauge like this one. They're not that expensive and you can find them just about anywhere. I've got it hooked up to an intake vacuum source and the idea is to hold the engine at about 2000 RPM. And what you'd want to see is you want to see the needle barely move. But if the needle slowly starts to drop along with engine RPM as you try to hold it at 2000 RPM, that's a really strong indicator that you have a restriction in the exhaust. I don't consider this test to be conclusive, and I think I know why. This is a drive-by-wire car, meaning that the accelerator pedal is not directly connected to the engine. There's an electronic connection via the computer that goes to this. One of the things I did notice as I tried to hold the engine at uh, 2,000, 3,000 RPM is I would hold the accelerator pedal at a certain spot, and the RPM would start to drop, but then it would move back up again, and I think that's because the computer is trying to maintain that RPM. So this test not being conclusive, it's not our only test, Let's check the temperature of those catalytic converters now to see if we can find a restriction. You can also check the inlet and outlet temperature of the catalytic converter to see if it's operational. What you want to see is 100 degrees hotter at the outlet than at the inlet. The catalytic converter is an oven. It should heat up as it operates. If it's the same temperature front and back, it's likely not doing anything. We have two catalytic converters here to check. Let's check them both. When checking catalytic converter temperature, have a buddy hold the engine at 2000 RPM while you check it. Front one, front temperature is about 190-ish degrees. The back is 220-ish degrees. So I would say this front catalytic converter is actually working. Now let's check this back one. Looks like I have 188, 190 at the front and at the rear. 165, 158, 170. If I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna say this rear catalytic converter because it did not get hotter at the outlet as the inlet. In fact, it was a little bit cooler back here. So I'm calling this catalytic converter as the one that's bad. The vacuum test, I admit, proved inconclusive on this vehicle. However, the temperature test was quite revealing in my mind. Now there's a couple of different ways we can go at this point. Um, you can remove O2 sensors. And I said O2 sensors, not air fuel sensors. So if you remove the, uh, the O2 sensor before the catalytic converter, you could take that out, take it for a drive and see if the condition has changed because that will relieve that back pressure that that blockage is creating. 
Although with air fuel sensors, I don't think the engine is going to run very well, if at all, if you remove it and also if you drop the exhaust because there's no exhaust moving past it. You might be wondering, what's the difference between an O2 sensor and an air fuel sensor? Well, I think the easiest way to tell the difference is O2 sensors have anywhere between one and four wires. Anything with more than four wires is usually an air fuel sensor. So if you see more than four wires, it's probably an air fuel sensor. That's a long way of saying, I'm going to call it here. I'm going to remove this and replace it. Well, we'll remove it, inspect it, and if we find damage, we'll replace it. Uh, give me a tool back. Yeah. It's mine now. Get a closer look. All right, let's see if we got stuff to come out. Not a lot. I don't really see anything yet, but there is the possibility that perhaps this converter came apart and started filling up the front of this one, causing the restriction. I think the way to inspect that is to remove this O2 sensor and have a look. <laughs> that was this huge buildup for not a whole lot. Let go my ego. All right, let's see if anything comes out. Nope. Well, that's not very conclusive, is it, Eric? <laughs> Now I've cut open the converter and I have this very bright flashlight that I'm gonna shine through it. You should see light passing through the converter, but I don't see a whole lot. Maybe a little, but not a whole lot. And that would indicate to me there's a good probability that this thing is clogged up inside. All right, I've turned off the shop lights and you can barely see anything coming through. You might see a few specks up in here, but there's not a light, lot of light passing through this, which leads me to believe that this is restricted and likely the cause of our blockage. And this is the rear converter, gonna do the same test and shine the flashlight through it. And this one, you can actually see it filtering through a little bit. If light can't pass through, exhaust sure can't pass through it. Now in this catalytic converter, you can actually see the light shining through it. This one is not clogged. Now that you've installed the new converter, you're not quite done. You need to protect your investment by making sure that the engine doesn't have any issues, such as misfires or uh, lean rich codes in the engine computer. Any of those things can cause damage to the new catalytic converter and may have damaged the original catalytic converter. Catalytic converters are mandated to last about eight years or 80,000 miles. So if you're past that, well, then you probably need to replace it anyway. But if there was an issue that caused that converter to go bad, you wanna make sure you address that so you don't destroy your new part. Before we take this out for a test drive, let's start it up and check for leaks. Ooh, doesn't sound like there's any leaks. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. It moves now. I'm a little disappointed I wasn't able to better illustrate the diagnosis of this problem. Obviously it's fixed, we took it out, we drove it, it's running much better. Um, we even cut in and tried to take a closer look at these things. But the main takeaway from this video that I'd like you to have is that a P0420 and a P0430 are not the time to go in and replace O2 sensors. We clearly saw that the O2 sensors were working when we looked at them in the scan tool, so that was not the issue. But the O2 sensors are responsible for monitoring the catalytic converter efficiency and making sure that it's within spec. And when it's not, that's when it sets that code. Most times when I see that code, I'm usually gonna end up replacing a catalytic converter. I know it's an expensive part, but I hope the information that I've provided you in this video is gonna help you diagnose that, and that way you spend your money wisely. 
I'm Eric the Car Guy with TRQ. Be sure to view before you do. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. Thank you so much for watching today. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'm Eric the Car Guy. I'll see you next time. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.